Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to focus on a lot of things. We are going to work on predominantly our chords, but also on the correct inversions with the most efficient way to shift between your chords. And we'll also introduce a, a way of practicing that might be very efficient, especially for today's fast-paced world where you don't get that much time on the piano. So if you want to work on your hand independence, if you want to get some arpeggio playing going in both hands, if you want to train your inversions, so stick around till the very end and do consider getting your keyboards out or pianos out and practice along with me through the lesson. You can always pause the video, try and get some of your own practice going and then uh, re replay the video or rewind or whatever works for you. And get my notes notation, MIDI files and backing tracks wherever applicable for pretty much all the lessons that we do on our YouTube channel. And before we start, it'll be nice if you can consider hitting that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications. Let's get cracking. So I have two scales for you. Let's learn two scales. We learn the two scales which have, well, one scale which has two flats and one scale which has two sharps. So which one is that? We'll start with the flat one. The, the scale which has two flats happens to be B flat major. That's the flats happen to be B flat, E flat. And then the scale which has two sharps happens to be D major. What are the sharps? F sharp and C sharp. A quick little trick to get the flats, you look at the last triplet and the last twin. Well, last twin is the right twin. There's no, there's just two of them. So with, with respect to the flat scales, the first flat ever would be your B flat. So visually speaking, it'll be B flat. It's the third triplet. And the first sharp, which will be in the G major scale, will be our F sharp which is the first triplet so the way the sharps increment it's always triplet twin triplet twin triplet so in the sharp family it will be F sharp C sharp G sharp D sharp A sharp so F sharp will work for G major F sharp and C sharp will work for D major which we are seeing today and then F sharp C sharp G sharp will work for A major F sharp C sharp G sharp D sharp will work for E major and then all the five sharps will work pretty well for B major. And then coming to the flats, B flat, first triplet. So it's always triplet, twin, triplet, twin, triplet. So last triplet, second twin, middle triplet, first twin, leftmost triplet. That's B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat. And in the key of B flat major, that'll be B flat, will obviously be the flat, the namesake itself and E flat which will be its 4 and that's the next flat. So we'll consider two scales today, B flat major and D major. And the exercise or the lesson will focus primarily on the 1, 4 and 5 chords of these two scales. So in the key of D major, it will be 1 is your D, 4 is your G, and 5 is your A. And the triads built out of these degrees would be 1 major, 4 major, and 5 major. So that will be D major, G major, A major, 1, 4, 5 in any major scale are all majors, isn't it? And on the key of B flat major, what will it be? That's your B flat. So B flat will be the 1, E flat will be the 4, and F will be the 5. And then again, major triads. So B flat major, E flat major, F major, that's a job. So to play these chords, let's just develop something like a 1, 4, 1, 5. That would be a good movement to practice. So that's 1, 4, 1, 5 on B flat. 1, 4, G major, 1, 5. But as you can see, on both the scales, this is highly inefficient for two reasons. One is... It just sounds too scattered. The voices, there is no proper voice leading. There's B flat just jumping to E flat. And it sounds very confusing for the listener because you're hearing a certain note on the top and then 
suddenly it jumps there's a huge interval it jumps so it's not preferred and also you'll need your eyes to play chords which i tend to recommend against whenever you play chords on the piano that is that one thing or one of the few things rather which you can actually master so you might as well just get it done and dusted without your eyes because you you can then use your eyes for other things like the melody line or a bass line or whatever else okay so to play these chords clearly if we do without our eyes it's going to be very tough to find these chords in root position so this is where inversions will help see i there's a high chance of me making a mistake if i just jump all the way to g so inversions will make our life easy so what i have in my handwritten notes is i've mapped it out so if you start with b flat major that's your root position right then if you start with b flat major in its first inversion then if you start with b flat major in its second inversion so these are the three starting points similarly on d on the key of d on the scale of d major that's your root position of the home chord or the one chord this is your first inversion of the uh, one chord and this is your second inversion of the same old one chord so root first inversion second inversion so from each respective inversion we are going to go to the next chord in the sequence and the chord progression we have for you would be 1 4 1 5 so if i take i'll start with the key of d major i'm going to keep interchanging between the two scales d major and b flat major so uh, you need to have it written down you can also download the notes so you have d major starting with the home or the root position from here how do i go to g this is the most efficient way to go to g i feel d major g major that's d g b and what's in common there's that d in common isn't it d d d d so retain the position of the common notes that's pretty much the job for, or the main tactic you use for chord inversions so d major Maybe you can play every chord four times. One, two, three, four. Change to G major. Coming back to D major. Ending with A major. But to play my A major, I'm not going to root position. I don't want that rather annoying jump. So what I do is D major, A major with a C sharp in the bottom because the A is common here. So I don't want to move that A, right? So D major. G major D major A major Okay and for now I'm just whacking both my hands as blocks so you know both hands get the practice which you might need if you play the the left hand chords then your right hand will have to explore a melody If you play the chords in the right hand then inevitably you're going to accompany a band or a singer or a choir okay so now i start on the first inversion of d major which is f sharp a d so what happens here f sharp a d g b d f sharp a d e a c sharp that would be the most efficient inversion journey so i can do f sharp a d in my right hand either index starts or i can even use my thumb okay depending on your preference if your hands are a bit more tinier i think the thumb will work well but with a small curve f sharp a d g b d f sharp a d e a c sharp repeat f sharp a d g b d f sharp a d E A C sharp, and now so we've done from the root, from the first, and now let's do from the second inversion of D. So A D F sharp. So A D F sharp. It's still D major, isn't it? B D G A D F sharp A C sharp E. And if you want, you can kind of do different rhythms between your two hands. Maybe you can do four hits here and one hit, a single hit in the left hand, like this: three, four, one, two, three, four. So 
so you are doing you could say crotchets or quarter notes in the right hand and semi breves in the left hand maybe i can do minims in the left hand 2 3 4 this will also train your hand independence 1 2 3 4 1 or you could do a dotted half note and then a crotchet 1 2 3 4 1 in the left hand 4 1 more hand independence 4 1 2 or you could do uh, a minim and two crotchets 1 2 3 4 hold hit hit hold hit and then you could flip that around and do the exercise in the right hand so you get the idea so we've done starting from the root from the first and from the second inversions let me now quickly do that on the key of b flat major i have it written down as well so you can see the notes b flat e flat b flat f so i would start b flat root position b flat d f b flat e flat g b flat d f a c f that's f major then then i could do d f b flat that's your first inversion e flat g b that's your root position of e flat major d f b flat back to first inversion and now end with second inversion of f major do 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 Get your fingers as knowledgeable as possible so that they kind of just flow through each of the notes. You know which finger is going to do what. And slowly but surely try to practice without your eyes. Maybe shift a bit faster like I'm doing now. I'm shifting every two beats. So that's a good challenge to give yourself. And lastly, F B flat D. Second inversion of B flat. E flat, B flat, back to F. You could also vary between staccato and legato like I'm doing. So, three staccatos, legato, three staccatos, legato, and back. Okay, so we've done basically 1 4 1 5 on two scales from three starting points and before we move on to some interesting arpeggio patterns and more hand independence challenges i would like to just point out that the inversion names of the chord are not so important it's just there are just three shapes for every triad three piano shapes there are also spread shapes which we can deal with later i've already done a separate series actually on a, on a called spread voicing so we we'll link that up in the description so there are just three so you don't have to focus on things like oh what is the root position of this chord i don't think you that's so important what's more important is you should be able to actually play this thing okay so now let's take this to town as they say and try and develop different patterns in both hands so the strategy i have for you to challenge yourself as a piano player would be you do arpeggios in one hand we'll keep it simple we'll do simple arpeggios and we'll do block chords in the other hand we'll start with that contrast see how it goes and then let's add more and more challenges to the equation okay so the right hand arpeggios let's take the key of b flat and um, i'm going to do the second inversion of each of the chords because i think that's the easiest for me so f b flat d g b flat e flat f b flat d f a c okay and similarly for d i might go to it shortly oh, i may play it lower okay so the right hand arpeggio let's keep some simple patterns going just starting from the bottom i call it low middle high middle low middle high middle and change the chords obviously ending then we can do l h m h l h m h low high middle high l h m h l h back to so low middle high middle low high middle high and the one i like a lot for the right hand will be high low middle low so i like that high note because it sticks out as a melody line 
high low middle low you could also do high middle low middle feels more symmetric to do high middle low middle but high low middle low i think sounds the best so uh, what you can do is practice one of those arpeggio patterns and just hold down blocks in the left hand in this case i'm just doing whole notes or semi briefs just ring the left hand focus on changing smoothly there should not be delay like that there should be any don't delay your shift okay and also focus on the bigger picture like the way it should sound play with a lot of dynamics volume control as i call it blocks in the left hand and arpeggios in the right hand you can change the pattern also there we go Let's try that on D. HLML. Other patterns. or other other starting points so the right hand has got its work now with the arpeggio now let's give the left hand an arpeggio pattern so the left hand arpeggio pattern would be l h m h this is the b flat in second inversion l h m very common left hand pattern so and now you're blocking in the right hand other inversions l h m h l h m start with some whole notes as the block in your left hand and maybe the last one as you gain confidence you can keep shifting so if i do d d 4 1 5 1 what's happening here arpeggios in the left hand and block chords in the right hand so that's the general approach in this particular tutorial one hand will do arpeggios the other hand will do block chords but if you keep the same arpeggio pattern in either hand let's say in the right hand now you're doing high low middle low right and let's keep that rolling now in the left hand if you do just semi briefs I mean you can the, there is a there are questions to be asked right is this the only thing which needs to be done or can we do a bit more so maybe do minims there 1 and 2 and 3 right maybe the same story you can do the three dotted minim plus a crotchet you should not compromise the arpeggio in the right hand so it get tends to get a bit tricky even for me so 1 and 3 and 4 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 4 1 and 2 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 Okay and then you can obviously target a few other hits like What did I do here? 1 and 2 and 3, 1 and 2 and 3 and the end of the 3, correct? 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 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 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. As you start doing the ends it gets a lot more interesting. Even the 2 and is nice. You can consider that. one two and and four it becomes a very familiar tresio which we use a lot in modern pop one and four one and four one and four one and four so a lot
lot of hand independence going on and you strengthen your knowledge of chord inversions in both hands. So then if the left hand has to do that pattern, you just throw away the right hand, not throw away the right hand, you build up a melody line like... Or if the right hand is doing that arpeggio, you can just do roots or a bass line, you know. Something very syncopated, like for example. I'm just hunting for those hands. you can probably map out a grid of eighth notes one and two and three and four and and you just decide let's say i want to do one the and of one and the on of two and just chill out for the remaining beats maybe now i want to do the one the and of the two and the on of the three like that. Maybe I'll do the one, the and of the three and the on of the four. Two and three and four and one and two. It'll test your independence and also test your ability to play that arpeggio pattern cor correctly in, in that particular right order. And you can test yourself the same way in the reverse. You know, you can do L, H, M, H in the left hand. Maintain that arpeggio going and in the right hand your hit point practice which are the hit points you are targeting on of the three or maybe and of the one and of the two on of the four one and two and three one and two and three and four I quite like this and two kabam and it gets even more challenging if you start making a staccato legato interchange as you toggle between them, you know. And 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 four and and legato and so on. So you, and it also may passes the time with a as you practice with a lot more fun, I think. Because beyond a point you're gonna get this sorted you're going to get each of these inversions and when you don't think of the exercise like when you start the exercise and say oh i want to map out all the inversions you've mapped it then i want to practice all the inversions that you've practiced but then if you want to keep practicing it it'll get pretty boring to just do it in the mundane block chord way so we've thus tried to make it first of all interesting by contrasting the two hands arpeggios there blocks here and uh, then we've even tried blocks with certain hit points over uh, an eighth note time grid, which is dividing the beat by two. And last but not least, you can train your ear while doing this, perhaps by singing the highest note of each of the chord tones. That would be a very good and easy start, I would imagine. Basically, you're trying to target all the three voice movements. So if a chord has three notes, the voice will be leading at one in one area so if you take b flat e flat b flat f if you observe the top voice it's going right now if you take the bottom voice which might be a bit tricky to sing b flat still b flat still b flat then if you take the bottom most voice F, G, F, F. so this could end up being a good ear training drill as well so you're training your ear through your voice by singing you're training with your your both hands of your piano are getting acquainted with the correct inversion movement and with each starting point of the chords chord number one root first and second positions and we are also improving our hand independence. First of all, arpeggios there, block chords there, and then a lot of accents, as you observed. So it can get very interesting. So even with this, 
uh, I'm singing the high voice, which might actually be the easiest to bring out because it's right up top. The middle voice. bottom voice okay and what you got me doing here was a video which i was working on but i i thought i should bring it into this one but i think we are done with this if you are interested in the next part let me know in the comments where we'll do two arpeggio patterns in both hands how cool is that going to be now so that's going to be quite a tutorial do stay tuned to our channel and you can do that by just hitting on that turning on that bell and hitting the subscribe button and to supplement all our learnings you have my notes on patreon and if you want to learn all of these things in a more structured manner you can consider going to our website nathanielschool.com where you can do one of the two things you can do a a live class 6 month semester with the school i am one of the teachers and you can also do my video courses where all of the lessons have been pre-recorded and kept in this vault of there's a lot of content there we call it the everything for life bundle so you might want to check that out as well so consider going to nathanielschool.com there's also a form in the description there are a few other related videos you might find those useful Right guys thanks a ton for watching the video catch you in the next one cheers